Murphy's Law and Whitetails, your guide to North America's number one big game animal. Today's topic is scent communication in whitetails, more specifically the glands they use to communicate. Today researchers have identified seven glands in the whitetail, three on the head, three on the legs, and one halfway between on male deer only. So starting with the glands on the head, the first is located at the base of a deer's nose called the nasal gland. And this gland is thought to lubricate the nose, but also to possibly play a role in scent communication with regard to distribution of an alarm scent when a deer snorts in the presence of danger. The next is the gland located at the base of a deer's eye called the preorbital gland. This gland also likely lubricates the eye, but likely also plays a role in scent communication with regard to marking of overhanging limbs at scrape sites. The last on the head is the forehead gland. This is a large glandular region, active most commonly in adult bucks during the breeding season, and it's been shown to produce a scent that's the personal signature of a buck. In other words, conveys other information on that buck's age and social status to other deer in the area. Bucks actively rub this gland when making rubs on trees, but bucks also will often sniff or lick the forehead glands of other bucks, likely to receive this information on their social standing in the herd. Now let's shift to the glands on the leg. The first is the gland called the interdigital gland, located between the digits or the hooves on a deer's legs. And this gland is a, a small pocket between the digits in which a rancid butter-like compound is produced. This compound has been shown to have a number of chemicals involved, but also with different volatility levels. In other words, some compounds evaporate very quickly, they're highly volatile, others are much more stable. We believe that this is in fact how other deer can tell which way a deer's walking, but so can a predator, the different signatures between the volatile compounds and the stable compounds. The next is the metatarsal gland, located, not surprisingly, on the deer's metatarsus, or it's outside of its back leg. This is a oval-shaped gland that, to date, has shown no real function in whitetails. However, in the whitetail's cousin, the black-tailed deer, it has been shown to produce an alarm scent, an alarm pheromone that alerts other deer in the area. However, what's interesting about this gland is that as you move from the northern parts of the Whitetails Range in Canada, down through Mexico and into Central America, this gland becomes less and less pronounced. And by the time you get into the southern parts of the Whitetails Range in northern South America, this gland is completely absent. No deer have it. So there's some speculation that this gland could play a thermoregulatory function in whitetails. In other words, help keep deer's core body temperature at a higher temperature than its extremities. This could be quite useful in cold climates. Next up is the tarsal gland, by far the most important gland of the whitetail. In essence, it's their driver's license or their social security card. It's their personal identification. Contrary to the belief of many hunters, this gland does not produce a scent of its own. In fact, it's just simply a sponge or a wick that is there to capture urine deposited on it by deer of all sexes and ages including very young fawns. It's the bacterial decomposition of urine on this gland that gives bucks their characteristic rutting odor. Last up is the prepucial gland. This gland is the most recently identified gland of the whitetail, located inside a deer's penal sheath. Its function is likely to lubricate the penis, but it may play a role in scent communication. In herding type deer species, like red deer and elk and fallow deer, those species that mark themselves commonly, more so than the environment like a whitetail, this gland plays an important role in scent communication. So there you have it, those are the seven glands of the whitetail. What we know and what we still don't know. We do know that the forehead gland, the interdigital gland, and especially the tarsal gland are the three most important glands in whitetail communication. That's it for today's episode of Murphy's Law. Hope you learned something. And until next time, be sure to leave your questions and your comments here in the video, but also to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to check out all the great content at HuntStand.com.